Welcome to AOT 3.0. Thank you so much for coming. I want to, um, I want to first of all greet Mr. Governor, who is a very passionate, would I say, ecosystem player in this environment. Um, a lot of this wouldn't have been possible without his own determination in the technology space. So I'm going to spend some time just giving you just brief profiles of some of the people that are making some of these things we are seeing possible. Let me start with Mr. Governor. And that's how I'm going to greet everyone. So Mr. Governor, on discussing with him some time ago, about two and a half years ago, we talked about research, we talked about innovation, we talked about so many things. And the conversation went into research. And he said, you know, the first thing he said was that, you know what, we need as a state to start funding research and development. And that's how LASTRIC was initiated. For those of you that don't know, LASTRIC is the Lagos State Science Research and Innovation Council. It's one of the foremost research and development and startup funding organizations in the country that is in the public sector. So I'm sure you don't know the significance. Out of 36 states in the Federation and a number of other African countries, this is one of the very few public sector initiatives that intervenes directly in research and development extremely significant. I'm going to move next quickly to the deputy governor. The deputy governor, years ago, back in 2002, some of us were in primary school there, not me, Shao, some of you. He started the Ministry of Science and Technology. At that time, before then, there was no Ministry of Science and Technology. And some of the um, projects that we are benefiting from them today, such as the Oracle implementation, which at the time was the most high-end ERP system you could find anywhere. And Lagos State implemented that at that time. And so even today, we are standing on some, sh on some shoulders. So Mr. Deputy Governor, ladies and gentlemen, please a round of applause. I need to give you these profiles. Stand some of your ecosystem partners and players in this space. I'm going to move on to the Honorable Commissioner of Science and Tech, who is also a developer at heart, IT um, guru, has done work for the U.S. Department of Defense, U.S. Navy, and a bunch of other uh, things in his past life. So extremely knowledgeable, a cloud expert as well, and uh, if you have, for programmers that are here, if you have any debugging issues, you can just, you know, phone him. And we have a whole lot, host of others here. We have very important people from the Lagos State House of Assembly. Why are they here? Because they are also your ecosystem partners. Let me start with the chairman of the Committee on Science and Technology, Mr. Finney. He's seated right here. He doesn't like uh, people seeing his face, but I'm going to expose him eh, because he's also your ecosystem partner as the chairman on science and technology. So our science and tech policies, our science and tech rules and regulations, they usually land on his table for review and things like that. So he's an important man. And guess what? He's an NYU graduate. Went to NYU. He's a developer himself. Oh, there's, there's an NYU grad there. So we have quite a number of people. We have other members in the Lagos House of Assembly, Chairman uh, or Committee on Transportation. We have various EXCO members here, SA on Works, MD of La Mata, um, HC Information, all ecosystem partners, all approachable, all very interested in this ecosystem. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Lagos State ecosystem. Technical is my, my presentations. I, I want to apologize 
I'm a very informal person. So this is going to be very, very conversational, right? As I present some of the things that we've done um, over the past couple of years. Is my flicker working? Okay. I guess so. Listen to me so that you can, do, you can um, go to the next slide. So I wanted to talk about AOT 1.0 and the AOT program in general, right? Let me have the next slide. You were on the right slide. You went back. Great. So this event showcases what is happening in the innovation ecosystem. Over the years, there has been a lot of traction, a lot of growth, a lot of activities, right? To the point that Lagos State is now globally recognized as an innovation capital. And AOT was set up to showcase that phenomenon. Not that. AOT was set up to bring together all ecosystem players such as yourselves in one room, talk to each other, collaborate, right, partner, network, and, you know, come together to build even greater things. That's the purpose of AOT too. Uh, that's the purpose of AOT, the art of technology. And so far, this is our third edition. So something seems to be working, right? Next slide, please. And so let me give you some background over what has been happening over the past couple of years. In, um, so far, Nigerian startups have raised it's more than 600 million already. It's more than 600 million. $600 million in funding, right? Already in 2021. It's more than this, actually. It's more than this. But what are we, what are we saying? 75% of those startups that have raised this funding are startups generally domiciled in Lagos. 75%. That tells you something about this environment. It tells you something about the market dynamics. It tells you something about the collective intelligence that exists in Lagos State. Right? Now, of course, 90% of um, $6.6 .6 billion in venture capital are in only cities in Africa. You know, Lagos, Nairobi. Cairo, Cape Town, and Accra, right? Lagos is a significant chunk and is way ahead of other cities. So according to the um, GSER, Global Startup, GSER, Global Startup Ecosystem Report, Lagos State is the number one innovation and technology hub in Africa. Number one. And of course, it also ranks Lagos 52nd globally, but with a climbing trajectory. That the prospects for Lagos are quite promising. When, when you have a growth tra trajectory, when you have an improving environment, it means that, you know, it's an upward trajectory. Next slide, please. Now, this is a very interesting Wow, this thing is really small. Now, these numbers, you see Nigeria 410, US that. I will explain. This number, this number, Nigeria 410, this stands for the number of tents Nigeria filed in 2020. According to the World Intellectual Property of so some people are probably surprised that does Nigeria file patents? Yes, we do. There are actually original inventions that happen in Nigeria. And the World Intellectual Property Organization actually records that. But let's put that into context. That same year, US filed 209,000 patents, right? And that same year, China filed 1.3 million. So even though they are encouraging signs, we still have a long way to go. Why did I bring out these stats? Because the more patent activity you have, the more likely 
you have to have a much active science and technology environment, much active um, research environment, a much more active original design and problem solving environment. So one of the things that we've identified is that that number needs to increase. So we are, kind, we are making headway with startups. We are making headway with a lot of um, uh, startups getting funded. But there are some really critical pillars that are still underfunded. And this is one of them. And that's why I brought it out. Next slide, please. So at AOT, we see all these facts. Our focus, ecosystem bridging. We bring together all the players within the ecosystem for deeper conversations, for much more creating conversations. We bring to, we showcase some of what is happening in Lagos State, both in the public and the private sector. And today you are going to be hearing some presentations, you know, from some of our partners, Facebook, they're called Meta now, and other private sector players. And of course, you'll be hearing from public sector as well. We drive value creation. Please, technical, look at this. It's going in and out. Next slide, please. So, AOT 1.0, this is the third edition. AOT 1.0 gave birth to the Lagos Innovation Master Plan, right? Which there are four pillars access, funding, infrastructure, and talent. That's what came out of AOT 1.0. AOT 1.0, we met with ecosystem players such as yours. We had discussions. They were like, look, these are the things that need to happen if innovation activity is going to increase, if there's a lot more fundraising, there's a whole lot more products being churned out that we need to tackle. And so we, this was born out of AOT 1.0. Next slide, please. AOT 2.0 gave birth to Startup Lagos and the open source project. And I'll go into detail um, into those later. Next slide. So we have, is that working? Thank you. So technical, you are still falling my hand though. Uh, this is supposed to be a technology conference, but you know, some, sometimes. So this is the uh, innovation and technology master plan. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, we've gone through this. Next slide, next slide. Right, gone through this, next slide. Next slide. Okay, great. AOT 3.0. What are we going to be spotlighting, right? The growing opportunities with Lagos State and beyond. We are also going to be spotlighting a lot of uh, the conversations around startup raising. Startup raises. Raises versus revenues. There are so many raises nowadays. But what's the story with sustainable revenue? Some of those conversations will be happening. Um, mechanisms to increase funding, all right, across the spectrum. If uh, technology funding, both at the startup level and at the corporate level. And of course, around policies. Policies enable much more funding to be pumped to the ecosystem. Next slide, please. Okay, so AOT 1.0. I'm going to go through this really quickly. Next slide, please. I'm going to go through the master plan and some of the things that we've done. So you see some of the traction that has been made. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are we starting with? Talent. Next slide. Yes, pillar one, talent. Of course, that is a major issue. We have talent um, challenges in both in Lagos and, of course, at large in Nigeria. And so what are we doing? 
to solve that. It's not working. It's not working. No, no. Next slide, please. Great. Next slide. All right. So, I mean, we need to go into the state of education in Nigeria. 62% literacy rate, right, um, in 2018. That is uh, quite challenging. And that poses a real issue. Yes? Mm -hmm. That poses a real issue with... Okay. So that poses a real issue with funding some of our technology um, uh, projects. Because where do, you, where do we get the talent from? Even the talent we have um, find greener pastures in other climes. So how do we keep talent? How do we increase the number of talent? Next slide, please. How do we increase the number of talent? So some of the things um, that needs to be done, teacher education, we all know this. Our teachers need to be better equipped. We need to deploy e-learning solutions. Next slide. Right? And so our goal in the Office of Innovation and Technology is to help drive the adoption of the skills of the future. Very, very important. And we all know some of these skills. You know, cloud computing, different IT skills, um, augmented reality, virtual reality skills. You know, these are some of the new paradigms, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Next slide, please. So I wanted to tell you briefly about one or two of the projects that we are doing. If you look at um, Eco Excel, where we are introducing smart tabs into the teacher process, right? So make, makes more efficient um, teaching methods. And of course, helping to increase literacy rates in our children. These are some of the things that we are doing. And of course, we are also including much more uh, technical education into the comprehensive school system. So um, kids coming up in secondary school are learning much more practical world skills, whether it's different types of digital learning, fashion design, technical um, uh, lab um, uh, subjects, in the, in the lab, whether it's physics, chemistry, much more technical um, uh, subject interventions. So the, comp the entire uh, comprehensive school curriculum is being readapted to be more um, consistent with the times. Next slide. Pillar two, access. Very, very important. You know, I was at a, I mentioned this some time ago. I was at a um, Google conference some time ago. And, you know, somebody came up and said that, you know, he has a problem when he's dealing with African countries. And I said, what's that problem? He said, African countries don't like releasing data. And we're like, hmm, that's very interesting. And, you know, if you read any OCD, OECD report, if you read any country report, you know that greater access to data helps with investment, helps with better decision making, right? helps with a lot of societal change. And so part of um, what a lot of um, science and technology reports and research are stating that part of Africa's um, stunted growth is as a result of lack of data, lack of data to be able to develop, lack of data to be able to uh, make better informed decisions. And so how are we taking care of that? Next slide, please. Next slide, next slide. Okay, no, no, next slide, next slide. Okay, yes, big data convergence platforms, right? How do public sector and private sector begin to share data? That's very, very important, right? Next slide. So what are we doing in Lagos to be able to um, tackle some of these challenges? The Open Data Initiative, right? that seeks to digitize millions of data sets across the public sector. This is happening right now as we speak, and there's quite some progress um, on, the, on the project. The project is called the ECO360 project, where you can have access to all types of data within uh, public sector and outside of public sector. And this will be on an open platform that people can visit. So, 
when there's more data available, developers are able to build more consistent products and things like that. Next slide. That's the Eco360 project. That's, op op that's open. The, the platform is being developed. If anyone is there, you can go to eco360.ng and see the work in progress. Next slide. Okay, we also have a digital cabinet dashboard that also presents uh, information to uh, stakeholders within government for better decision making on city management, civic management, and things like that. Next slide, please. So we have infrastructure, right? Infrastructure gaps. There's no argument there, right? Next slide. And we do see quite a bit of work in infrastructure in the continent. You know, there are already 76 million um, internet uh, subscriptions, about 40% penetration, 187 million lines. This is all good. Next slide. Um, there are even new initiatives coming up. Globalcom is launching GLO2, a submarine cable. Facebook is bringing another cable into Nigeria. Those are the submarine cables that bring the internet uh, to Nigeria. And there's a lot of progress. But what are some of the challenges within the infrastructure space? Next slide, right? So even though all of these is happening, there's still the last mile challenge. How is it getting to homes? And that is what is informing our own metro fiber projects within Lagos. Uh, the governor will We'll probably touch on that. Um, it's a very, very important project, bringing infrastructure closer to homes. Because even though you have all these cables at the ocean, it won't mean anything unless you can get to uh, you and get to um, the ecosystem. Um, and of course, the next slide is funding. So how does government... There's a lot of raises nowadays. How does government fund the underfunded areas? And I mentioned earlier um, about research and development, a very, very important um, part that we need to fund. So next slide. Of course, we've seen the funding landscape raises. Next slide. Right. Next slide, please. So this is a very important part. Is the, is the video ready? I just wanted to play a video on some of the work that we are doing in the underfunded areas in the ecosystem. Is the video ready? Can we cue that up? Lagos, a metropolitan city with a population of over 20 Thank million you. people, has ambitions to transform into a smart city at the 21st century economy. Lagos State is not without its attendant challenges, and the Lagos State Government is set to take on these challenges head on. The Lagos State Governor, His Excellency Babajide Sonwolu, set out to position Lagos State as one of the world's knowledge hubs and ecosystems. In 2019, the Lagos State Government inaugurated the Lagos State Science, Research and Innovation Council last week with a mission to create wealth, growth, and tackle societal challenges through the application of science and technology. Lagos Science and Research Council will be having a seed money of 250 million for all of you tech hubs that are here to go engage them and see and believe and dream and see that your tomorrow has started today. Last week is a council which is different from the ministry and is different from the government per se. We wanted it to work outside government. It's, it's a gift by the government, but it has to be managed properly, which means it should not suffer the bureaucracy of government or even there's no influence as far as government is concerned. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we try and turbocharge the mechanisms that we use to solve these problems. Now, how do we do this? We intervene through a series of programs within the innovation ecosystem. We launch and we drive technology projects in Lagos that will deliver on economic value. In May 2020, Last Week initiated a call-out for research initiatives and innovative ideas in the area of manufacturing, food security, COVID-19, and health management. 
Entries were received from all over the state. Legosians demonstrated ingenuity and capacity for developing concepts that makes life better. So we look, we look at who and who are the drivers, who will make these things happen, and can do they have the capacity and interest to be able to make it happen? Because the value proposition may be very good, but if the right people are not there, it will not happen. In August 2020, the government made good their promise by redeeming its commitment to fund research and development initiatives. It gives me great pleasure to be here today. It is in many respects a landmark day. A day that cements the commitment this administration has for the advancement of science and technology in Lagos. The qualified candidates and would-be beneficiaries represent initiatives and ideas that are ready to resource for the development of Lagos. The fund's recipient deployed resources received from the government to create resourceful, tangible development, lifting our people out of poverty and advancing knowledge. Nanjak is an edtech company that brings accessible and affordable education to children using technology and gamification. Jivo is a tech-enabled solution that um, aggregates, educates, and incentivizes residents in the communities to recycle their waste. Uh, we also provide incentives for them to do that. And through this process, we create value within the communities, creating jobs um, and providing a means of livelihood through these recyclables that they um, process. We are an ag tech enterprise that helps smallholder farmers operate at commercial scale. What that means is we provide farmers with access in of, to information to know what to grow and um, how to grow with a focus on improving regenerative farming practices. There are widespread uh, interventions that the university decided to go into. One of it was the development of uh, the ventilator for uh, addressing respiratory challenge in patients that are affected by the, uh, by the infection. Incidentally, as it were, around that time, Nigeria was said to have less than 500 ventilators for over 200 million people. Yeah, we heard about the last week fund um, sometime in the middle of the COVID period. I mean, it was actually one of my um, colleagues that found it, uh, Ufoma, and she worked on, on the application throughout. And of course, uh, we were part of an interview process. That was where I really got to understand more about the people behind it. And, the process around it. So yes, um, in terms of helping us achieve, um, it was really instrumental at, the, at that stage of the business and when we got the funds because it was, it was used to help us prove um, some of the concepts that we had identified and wanted to pursue. For example, um, processing materials into PPE was something we were able to use the funds for. So um, in the last year, we've been able to make over 20,000 units of face shields and face masks for the community based on the recyclables collected. That might, might have been more difficult to do without the last week intervention. So our last week project was about taking the games to the public schools. I'm going to take it to a number of the public schools in Lagos so that they can have fun learning using technology and be exposed to digital skills. The last week fund was really God sent. So we've actually been doing this initiative in a you know, much smaller scale. So with the last week grant, what that allowed us to do is go from 60 children to 5,000. And we're really grateful to Lagos State and the last week grant for making this possible. For us as researchers, for us as innovators, what we did was a demonstration of what we call proof of concepts. If not for that last week, that proof of concept will not have gotten to this day. The last week fund has helped us significantly. The office right behind me is something that we were able to afford through the last week grant. We're also able to grow our team from the number of three people to 10 people. 
and also we're able to scale our product development and the number of farmers that we're able to support. So the last week fund has been quite critical in our growth trajectory. Yes, I think I'd like to say, of course, it's a very laudable initiative and I think it should be um, kept up. I'll start with a big thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping our dreams come true. This is in the right direction in terms of providing funding to entrepreneurs. I also think that policies that help for a more uh, suitable business environment should be looked into. So Lagos State should not relent. They should continue to show that leadership that they have been showing among the committee of states that we have in Nigeria. They should continue to support researchers. They should continue to support innovators. They also should continue to build capacity. The launching of Last Week Grant Fund goes ahead to cement the unwavering commitment of this administration to not only build better solutions, but to find innovative ways to create a better Lagos for all. Thank you so much. So, I mean, we had to let you see that so that you can see some of the work that is happening with LASRIC, not just funding entrepreneurs and startups, but also funding the underfunded areas of research and development. So we have a pipeline of problem solving, extremely um, important work. And would like to um, take this opportunity um, to, to open up for collaborations across the spectrum of the innovation ecosystem. Um, the last RIC body is um, managed and administered by both private sector, mostly private sector participants and public sector participants. And, um, you know, today there's even going to be um, some last week activity as well. So I just want to um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is just a fraction of some of the things we are doing. And I want to wish you um, a happy, happy AOT time. Thank you so much.